Russia is never as strong as she looks. Russia is never as weak as she looks. This quote is attributed to multiple individuals, including Winston Churchill. It also perfectly represents the various contradicting reports and information I have seen from the war in Ukraine since February 2022. While on Twitter and TikTok we often see various failures of the Russian armed forces, these videos might be deceiving. Recently a German combat engineer fighting with the Ukrainian legion posted the following. Small outburst on my part. Currently I read many gloating posts about poorly equipped and trained Russians. A la, they must already be attacking with spades. Such exceptions may exist, not regularly. I consider this public image to be dangerously glorified. He also noted on troops from the Wagner Group, At the moment we have more and more attacks from Wagner in our sector, who now thinks of toothless ex-convicts who run with maximum an old Kalashnikov in their hands per human wave over open terrain towards our positions is mistaken. This issue also came up in an interview with the officer and historian Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Simeons from the Royal Military Academy in Brussels, who last year published an article on combined arms in the Defense Horizon Journal, which is linked in the description. We are aware that the views expressed in these interviews don't represent the views of the Belgian armed forces. So let us hop into the discussion about the spectrum of capabilities the Russian armed forces are displaying so far. Recently on Twitter, I think yesterday or today, I saw a, a thread, and I'm not sure if it's correct, but it looked that way, that the Russians are now using drones for counter battery, that they immediately, apparently they have loitering munitions. And so that uh, the one to two minute for the self-propelled artillery to move is not valid anymore, and that they get the immediately, or Im immediately that they get destroyed very fast now. Which, yeah. which which already lost uh, the Ukrainian several self-propelled guns. In the yeah, last I've, few I've days. read that. I've read that too. Um, it's it's uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's a bit early to say that if, if that's correct or not. That's it's uh, one thing. Um, and and well, apart from from that, it's it's an ongoing race between attack and defense. And now, now drones seem to be on the winning hand, uh, but counter drone measures will, will certainly step up as well yeah so that that's a good example of of the the, the competition uh that you always have in, in a longer war between attack and defense and there it's uh, by drones and but it's it's a, in, in every field uh, whether it's gas warfare in the, in the first world war and then better masks and then better gases and then better masks again <laughs> you have that competition uh all the time where you, the enemy, your enemy is responding and reacting to what you're doing, which makes you have to approve as well. Um, and, and I think we expect the Ukrainians to have an advance there because they seem to be much more flexible in their thinking and uh, much more flexible in their doing as well. And they have a highly educated society. Um, and, but it's surprising that even, but it's, it's, it's a message actually that I've given several times to Belgian journalists, because in Belgium, we, we tend to have a very negative view on the Russian army, which is perhaps justified, but sometimes it gets ridiculous where people are inclined to believe that all Russians are alcoholics and don't know how to fire a gun, don't have any, don't have any ammunition. Uh, get no training and basically have to wage war on their crocs, uh, you know, uh, uh, or sandals in, in wintertime, which is not entirely intact yeah. as well. We do see that the Russian army is improving and it will never be the most innovative army in the world, uh, I think, uh, not in the first decades, but, but uh, they are learning as well. And I think their learning curve is is. It's perhaps not as steep uh, as as, uh, as as the Ukrainians is probably, uh, but but they are learning. And, and what you told me, if if it's true uh, that they are using the drones uh, for for uh, and loitering munition for for counter battery, that's well, the, the idea in itself is is not stupid. But you need to have the technicians and the funding to develop this idea. But I think we will see more of this uh, in in the coming months, unless the war would uh, be over soon, but we will see more of, of these innovations uh, very soon. 
for me, uh, it was also interesting what the, uh, one combat engineer noted. He, I think he was fighting Wagner at that time. And he said, uh, I, the impression that some people give that we are fighting um, convicts if our teeth is completely wrong. They are well equipped. They are well trained and everything. And, and my impression is now, especially also with the loitering ammunition example, is that it seems that the, the Russian armed forces is basically all over the spectrum. You have like like really basically um, completely untrained regular infantry with extreme bad equipment, but you apparently also have extreme high professionals and well-trained and well-equipped uh, combatants, which seems to be uh, they're extremely diverse probably compared to others. And it kind of reminded me of, I think it was a report from a German officer in 1941 he went to the Eastern Front and he basically noted about Soviet artillery. Either it doesn't hit anything at all or it's extremely deadly. And, and I, 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 I showed that quote to a, to a German military historian and he just laughed and said, yeah, it's, it's the Soviet Union or Russia, a land of extremes, either the one thing or the other. And it seems now we have everything in between. Which, which kind of reminds me of this, this famous quote, um, Russia is never as strong as you think, and it's never as weak as you think. And, yeah. and yeah. I think yeah, that's, that applies to this conflict. And I think Absolutely. it's because it, it, it's so large and, and also to a certain degree from the culture and everything so different to, to us in the West. Because there also uh, several, um, or at least one East German historian, and he said, or former East Germany, and he said that the thinking is different. And I, I, I grew up with this thinking, but I'm already out of it again. And, and he also noted that this is one of the strengths for the Ukrainians because they, they know the Russians to a certain degree. And we in the West don't, and especially from, from my, my view at... What I see in media, on Twitter, on TikTok and everything, most, a lot of it is focused on, I think Professor Neitzel said it well, we always want that the, the war is over. So every, every, basically every success, we, we hope a bit more it's will over and every, and every time we see that the Russians are defeated or that they do something badly, we also go too much into over-interpretation yeah. or hype it up. And so we, we, we get this distorted view in verse. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's one of the things that I objected to to some journalists. Uh, I think it was a month ago that I did some interviews on that. I, I'm also concerned because in the West, especially uh, in certain countries like Belgium, who have not been uh, the best uh, donators to to Ukraine, well, it could lead Western governments to decide, well, we don't need to send any more aid because the Russian army is just a bunch of alcoholics uh, who just attack in human waves. But human waves are just a part of the story. The human waves exist. We've seen footage of that, but we should always be skeptical of the anecdotal, the anecdotal part of it. And, and well, it's it's too early to, to write the, the, the history of the Russia-Ukraine war of 2022, but uh, well, we'll, well, we'll make that judgment later. Um, um, but but I do think that certain units uh, are, are doing the best they can to to do perform well. Um, and and as with officers, uh, I can understand that there are Russian officers who are not concerned about the welfare of their uh, soldiers. But uh, I also read test uh, um, testimonies uh, from from. Uh, uh, testimonies from from Russian soldiers, where where you you see the opposite, where where they were training, where they were given equipment and and everything they needed, and, and they were taken care of. So so well, both exist, and and but but we in the West, uh, especially the media that I get to see, are inclined to um, well stress the the weaknesses of the Russian armed forces. Uh, j j just to give the example of morale. How many times have I read that the Russian army is close to collapse due to uh, bad morale? But but in, in one year they haven't collapsed. Uh, yeah. We haven't seen any signs, and perhaps that because of the repression. I don't know. Um, but even even that, I mean, 
haven't seen any videos of a few perhaps, but not many videos of, of summary executions because soldiers refuse to do their jobs. Um, these images don't don't get to us while well, we see all other cruel things, uh, torturing civilians, torturing POWs. We see it all. It's, everybody films everything, but but not that. So the moral collapse of, of the Russian armed forces that's been predicted by some analysts for a year, I, I, I still don't see it because I, I honestly believe that a part of the Russian army, a part of the Russian soldiers is sincerely uh, motivated for the war because they, they believe what they see in the propaganda, that they're fighting the devil, that they're fighting uh, uh, the Nazis, that they're fighting NATO and that Russia is under attack and, and they're fighting for their country. Perhaps, probably not all. I, I, perfectly aware of that, but, but saying that the Russian army is close to a collapse on, on, due to moral issues, well, I hear that for a year, but I, I still don't see it. So so uh, we shouldn't underestimate it. They, they improve as well. They, they try to innovate where they can. I don't think they will be uh, the most innovative uh, army at all, but nevertheless, it's an autocratic state which gives uh, the uh, officers and the politicians more control of the economy. If they say, if they say to a company to produce, uh, I don't know, vehicles, well, the company will produce vehicles in the West. The company will say, how much do you pay? Um, so so the control of, of, uh, of, of, of the economy is much, much better to a certain extent in, in Russia. Well, the link between state and, and economy is much tighter in, in Russia than, than in the West. Uh, um, so, well. We will see, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching and see you next time, bye.